Welcome to the introduction of Sophistic Reinforcement Generation 2014. My name is Roland Suhr. Hello! So, let's start. I've prepared this example building to show you how Sophistic Reinforcement Generation works. We will take a look at this beam and at this floor more in detail. Let's take a quick look at the analytical model. Before we start, one important information. To run this lapse version, an installation of the analysis software Sophistic is required. You can download a free trial version at our homepage. First I will show you the Sophistic extensions, which allows you to link the model to the Sophistic analysis software. As you can see, I have already exported and calculated my building. In this reason, we can start with the generation of the reinforcement back to our Revit project. And let's switch to the sheet of the slab at the second floor. To generate reinforcement, we need design results, which can be stored in third-party database or in Revit results packages. In this example, I will use the Sophistic database called CDB, but I think it's very interesting to know if you have results from other software stored as Revit results package, you can use it within Sophistic reinforcement generation also. I have exported this floor as a separate subsystem with elastic support conditions and a variable area load. But that should be enough of theory for the moment. Let's switch to the reinforcement tab. On the left side, by the way, you see another app, Sophistic Reinforcement Detailing, which is also available in the Exchange Store. Here on the right side you see Sophistic Reinforcement Generation. Let's start the Create command. In the Selection tab we can select elements. We choose the floor of course, say Finish and let's check quickly if we have chosen the right database of our subsystem. In the Settings tab I can mainly control our rules files. There's one for beams and columns and another one for slabs and walls. Please keep it in mind. I will show it more in detail later on. In the other tabs below we can set our preferred reinforcement settings for each layer individually. For example, you can set the diameter and the spacing of your wish for the base reinforcement. At the top we can check the maximum required reinforcement from the database. It's also possible to turn each layer on and off individually. We will keep the default settings and confirm with OK. Now we see the new generated reinforcement. I have added view filters to get the top and the bottom reinforcement in separate views. We decided to keep the bars at the whole length because we have another tool to split them very comfortably afterwards. But now I want to check my reinforcement. To do this I start the command check, select elements, in this case of course our slab, finish and once again we have to take care that we use the right database. In the settings tab we can choose a distance between control points, let's try point 8, alright and say OK. And we got this small check reinforcement dialog. For this view we have to change to the upper layer. Let's zoom a little bit closer to the slab that we can see something. What we see now is the total required reinforcement. Under value we have different options. Let's try still required and we see nothing. That means of course there's nothing required anymore. Let's try this and change the length of this reaper set. And we see immediately there's not enough reinforcement anymore. To show quickly some detailing functionalities, let's assign the reinforcement to the sheet floor level 2. And maybe the really nice command hide and tag rebars, we have to choose the rebars, say finish. And the whole reinforcement becomes hide it, tag and a symbolic representation. And we can set quickly the bar marks. So I start 
set bar marks, alright, ok, for all the bars which are assigned to floor level 2, ok, and now we see our bar marks. So far the slips, let's talk about the beam. For this I have also prepared a sheet with a side view and several sections. The workflow is almost the same. We start the command create. Now we have to change the database because in the subsystem of the floor are no results from our beam. Let's select the beam, finish and now we have an individual tab for the upper, for the lower reinforcement and for the stirrups. Let's take a quick look inside one of these tabs and you see it's very similar to the settings of the floor. But now, as promised, we will take a look to our rules files more in detail. Let's open this one for beams and columns. Of course, we don't want to have a hard-coded black box behavior. And of course, there are many different design codes all over the world, different company standards, and also the rules may vary even between engineers in the same office. With other words, these rules files allows you to standardize reinforcement design regarding your preferences. For example, here you can see the allowed bar diameters and here below is a special rule for beams which says in the third row if you have a beam higher than 50 cm don't use bar diameters less than 16 mm. You will find also rules for example for the spacing between bars for the bending diameter and here in this part for the anchorage length, in this case according to Euro code 2. Now let's go back to our project and let's keep everything like it is and say OK. And ta-da! I would say not that bad. Let's go to a 3D view to get an overview. Maybe a little bit closer. Maybe we can try another graphical display option, maybe. Yes, that's nice. But now let's check the reinforcement. Therefore I have prepared another view. And once again the reinforcement tab and start the command check reinforcement. Now we have to choose the beam, say finish, take care of the right database and say OK and you know already our check reinforcement dialog. First let's turn the view that way is a little bit closer. OK, in the check reinforcement dialog for beams and columns we can change between longitudinal bars or the shear reinforcement and the values just required. This is the red part, the existing is the blue part and of course both together that makes most sense to check if we have enough reinforcement. So now I like to change something. Maybe let's select this bar at the top and make it longer. And we see of course in this area we have now more existing reinforcement. Maybe another example. Let's switch to the shear reinforcement. Change the diameter of the bars to 20 and you see there's a little little bit too much now. So now we are at the end. I thank you for your attention and hope you will like these forthcoming developments from Sophistic. Thank you.